Hey everybody, Brian from Innisfil Creek Honey in beautiful Barbados. Uh, this is the backyard of our house in Barbados here. Uh, banana plantation, that's what I like to call it over there. Um, and we have, we have a bit of property here, not too much, but, but a nice size yard in a beautiful neighborhood. Um, lush and green all the time. We just had some liquid sunshine come down, so the uh, back pads a little bit wet. Um, and I guess uh, the reason why I became a beekeeper is because I like to work with bees. I also like the uh, warmer months just the same way bees do. Uh, dislike the winter as bad as bees do. Um, so now we're in our property down in Barbados for the winter. Kiara is back at the shop running things back there. I'm still email and all that stuff so you can do a lot of things. Uh, when you're running a business, not being at home. Um, but anyways, we're, we're down in Barbados here. We have a nice little backyard, perfect climate. Um, not much of a beekeeping industry down here. There's a few beekeepers, small island, very uh, disorganized uh, as far as an industry goes. Um, I met a few friends. I hang out quite a bit with uh, one good friend of mine who's a beekeeper on the island. Um, and I just bought two beehives, or the parts of some of the two beehives. They have a, uh, an organization on the island uh, ran by the government, the NCC, uh, National Conservation, Con something like that, NCC anyways. Um, and they, uh, they, have oper they operate a greenhouse, they uh, do farming, they bring in farming equipment, things like that. And they also bring in some beekeeping supplies, um, quite expensive, uh, oh my gosh. In that little pile there, I have four deep boxes and two bottom boards. They didn't have any inner covers or outer covers. They also didn't have any frames, so we're looking for frames. Um, I'm gonna make some, uh, some uh, top boards for them, so I'm not really worried about that. Uh, but anyways, those four deep boxes, two bottom boards, 300 Barbados dollars. So that uh, works out to about, 200 Canadian for four deep boxes and two bottom boards. Um, so uh, you think you have it rough up in Canada when you're trying to start being a beekeeper or expand. That's crazy to start being a beekeeper or expand when you're on Barbados and that's the prices you're looking at uh, to start a beehive. So anyways, uh, today I'm gonna put together my four deep boxes I also picked up some cool paint colors uh, to paint them up, uh, trying to be all patriotic. Uh, not patriotic for Canada, but patriotic for Barbados. So I picked up uh, the Barbados flag colors. I think that'll be pretty cool to throw on the boxes. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna start beekeeping. And instead of back home where it's uh, all commercial beekeeping and rushing and trying to catch up here, I'm doing backyard beekeeping. Um, so I'm going to play around with that a little bit, see what I can do, um, see how hard it is to keep bees in Barbados. One thing I have learned is the bees are a little bit more fun to work with, I like to call it. Uh, so they're not Africanized, but they're, uh, they're fairly aggressive. Uh, they have a wild bee population on the island. That's where most of the bees come from that beekeepers have on the island is, is wild bee, bee, bee swarms or bee hives they've pulled out of buildings and trees. Um, and they've survived on the island from the beginning when the Europeans brought the bees here till now with pretty much no treatment. Um, so they're, they're a little aggressive, they're a little swarmy. Um, so I'm gonna play around with that, see if I can uh, work with that in my backyard. Uh, this is where I'm gonna put them, back here. So uh, the neighbors, when we moved in, so the, the, the previous owners left all these cinder blocks here and I cursed them when I uh, moved in because there's, what do you do with a pile of cinder blocks? But they're gonna make a fantastic uh, hive stand. So I'm gonna turn those cinder blocks into a hive stand. I'm gonna tuck the beehives into the corner there. Uh, I think maybe beside the shed, but I might actually push them in behind the shed. There's about a three foot gap in behind the shed there between the shed and the fence and then the other side of the fence into the neighbor's yard right there. 
Um, there's a big hedge running right along the side of that. Uh, also, um, there's nobody living in that house. That house has been vacant for about two years. Uh, the previous owners, I believe, uh, moved back to England um, and uh, we don't even know, or the neighbors don't know if they're even alive anymore. So that's a, a vacant house, really. But, but anyway, so that's where I'm going to stick them back in there. So until somebody purchases that house and moves into it, um, it won't bother anybody. And even after that, because of the big hedge in between our property and their hot property, it's about a, about a three foot deep hedge, um, and it's about five feet high. So I don't think they'll bother it. The neighbors over here, behind us. Um, the bees should fly up and over the shed anyways, so I don't think they'll bother them at all. Anyways, uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna spend my winter uh, playing around with two beehives, um, and I'm gonna be a hobby beekeeper in an urban setting. It's gonna be quite fantastic. Anyways, uh, I'll take you along for the journey. I have lots of time, so I'm probably gonna video a few uh, videos while I'm working away at it. Anyways, everybody have a great winter. Um, I'll see you around. If you ever need any beekeeping supplies, anything like that, Kara's always at the shop. We're always available via email. You can order equipment online, all that great stuff. Anyways, everybody have a good one.